country. There will be other important issues on your ballot. Here to break down the biggest initiatives across the country is the managing editor of the Washington Free Beacon, Aaron McLean. Aaron, good to see you this morning. Thanks for waking up for us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. So as I said, you know, we, we've talked so much about the general election, but who is going to control the Senate is at stake. And currently, Republicans are trying to hold on to 24 seats, some of them in swing states. What's going to happen here? Look, this is unforgiving math. Long before Donald Trump was the nominee or, or either party had a nominee, Republicans knew that the Senate math in 2016 was unforgiving. You have them defending something like two dozen seats with Democrats only defending, uh, I, I think the number is 10. Um, and all Democrats really need to do is to pick up four seats and win the presidential race wow. to give them uh, control of the Senate, or of course five seats um, would take control even with the Republican win. Um, that is a very doable task for them, and Republicans face some extremely tight races, places like uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, a bunch of others. And Nevada, Harry Reid, Reed, see, that'll be interesting to see what happens there. All right, so Obamacare is obviously on people's minds across the country, but in Colorado, for example, health care is something they're going to be voting on. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, supporters of a initiative, I think it's Proposition 69 in Colorado, uh, say that uh, Obamacare is leaving too many people uninsured, and so they need statewide single payer, essentially universal health care for Coloradans. Uh, it's a very bold plan. Uh, the initiative would cost uh, more than the current operations of the state of Colorado. Uh, there'd be a huge tax increase to fund it. This has actually been tried before a few right. years ago. In Vermont, Vermont gave right? Us a shot. How did that yes. play out for them? Uh, not well. I mean, uh, you, do you remember uh, Green Mountain Care? Uh, right. You probably don't. Nobody really does. Um, people gave it up in Vermont when they realized how much it was going to cost. Mm, we'll see how that plays out. And gun control in a number of states is on the ballot. Yeah, that's right. This is kind of an interesting fact about the gun control initiatives that are out there in, uh, in California, uh, a couple other states. Um, th they're all gun control initiatives. That is to say, they're not too many gun rights initiatives. Uh, California has a, a magazine, a, a, a large capacity magazine initiative, banning large capacity magazines on the ballot. Uh, Washington's got an initiative uh, relating to uh, domestic violence and protective orders and, and who can have a gun under those circumstances. Uh, these are all looking uh, uh, pretty good um, in, in, the, in terms of uh, their prospects for passing. And the minimum wage in places like Arizona going up uh, $10, Colorado 12, Maine uh, $12, Washington 13.50. Um, how does that play out, and, and how should people be thinking about that as they're voting on it? Well, look, this is uh, an emotional issue. This is one of those situations when you're there in the in the uh, the voting booth, and uh, it seems like a minimum wage increase is going to help low-income voters. But of course, uh, economists will point out. Uh, that when the government raises the price of labor, employers buy less of it. It's, it's simple supply and demand. So things that are often well-intentioned uh, and seem like they're going to help low-income workers may end up actually reducing the number of jobs out there. If you, if you see all those uh, self-checkout lanes in grocery stores, that kind of automation, that thing is spurred by higher minimum wages. It's so interesting. Sometimes all these important issues get lost during a general election, but you've got to keep your eye on them. We'll see how all of this plays out. Aaron, good to see you this morning. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much. And South Dakota proposing a minimum wage decrease from 8.50 to 7.50. Yeah. Voting on that. Well, the time now is 19 minutes after the top of the hour. The battle in the Buckeye State. Donald Trump holding a slight lead in the all-important state of Ohio. But can he keep it? Well, we'll take you live there next. Stick with us. in the battle for the White House today. Both campaigns sending surrogates to the must-win state of Ohio. Donald Trump holding a slight lead in the Buckeye State after more than a million early ballots have already been cast. And that is where we find Matt Finn, who is live in Columbus this morning. Matt, good to see you. Good morning, Abby and Heather and everyone at home. Well, this morning, the average of polls now shows Donald Trump ahead by two and a half points here in the critical state of Ohio. And Hillary Clinton is unleashing some of the biggest weapons in her arsenal to make a dent in that lead. President Obama campaigned here in Ohio yesterday. He hammered Donald Trump, but avoided mentioning perhaps the biggest threat facing Hillary Clinton's presidency. And that's the FBI director, James Comey's decision to publicly renew the probe into her private email server. President Obama told the crowds here in Ohio, Hillary is not a liar. Has she made mistakes? Of course, so have I. There's nobody in the public arena over the course of 30 years that doesn't make some. But she is a fundamentally good and decent person who knows what she's doing and will be an outstanding president. 
In these final days, ground game is considered crucial, especially since Donald Trump's lead is well within most margins of error. Clinton and the Democrats have had a very visible ground game here. Trump, well, not so much support. Ohio's own governor, John Kasich, publicly announced Monday he voted for John McCain on his absentee ballot. Looking ahead today, Eric Trump will be campaigning on behalf of his father at two separate events in Ohio. Abby and Heather, back to you. It's an important state. All right, Matt Finn, live for us in Columbus. Thank you, Matt. Everyone has their family out trying yeah, to support doing them. anything they possibly can yeah. they need them well the time now is 25 minutes after the top of the hour and clinton is in serious trouble that is a quote and it's a grave new warning from a well-known internet pirate are her 33,000 deleted emails about to be released mm. and how one phone call from former president bill clinton earned the clinton foundation six million bucks we're going to take you inside the new wikileaks dump mm. and first though jimmy kimmel's sixth annual this is always funny parents <laughs> Parents tell their kids that they ate their Halloween candy. There's no more left. You're just choking. Uh, no, I ate it all. <gasps> we ate all your Halloween candy. And I ate all your candy. It is Wednesday, November 2nd, six days now until Election Day, and it is a sprint to the finish. I can't believe it's six days. Donald Trump putting a one-two punch on his closing argument as Hillary Clinton dodges the FBI investigation by unleashing an all-out assault on Trump supporters. For any Democratic voter, you are having a bad case of buyer's remorse. You can change your vote to Donald Trump will make America great again, okay? I am sick and tired of the negative, dark, divisive, dangerous vision and behavior of people who support Donald Trump. Woo! Well, we are live as the candidates double down in key battleground states today making their final push. Mm. Square, where everyone is starting to wake up. Light's always shining there, so though. Everyone's always up yeah. in Times Square. <laughs> Good morning to you. You're watching Fox and Friends First. I'm Heather Childers. Good morning. I'm Abby Huntsman. It's currently 31 after the hour, and we begin with six days to go in this election. Donald Trump and Mike Pence seizing momentum in the final days of this election. And the Republican running mates heading to the must-win state of Florida with an anti-Obamacare message that is making America listen. Kristen Fisher's live for us in Washington, D.C. with the new poll numbers to prove it. Kristen, who would have guessed a week ago the polls would be as close as they are today? I know, Abby. I mean, there have been so many <laughs> twists and turns in this race, but it seems only fitting that with six days to go, we're looking at a dead heat. Clinton's still ahead by about two points in the Real Clear Politics average of polls. But a new poll out yesterday has Trump ahead by one point. According to this ABC News Washington Post poll, Trump is at 46 percent, Clinton's at 45, Gary Johnson's at 3 percent, and Jill Stein's at 2. The last time this poll had Trump in the lead was back in May, six months ago. And check this out. Down in Florida, Trump's doing even better, according to this New York Times-Siena poll. He's at 46 percent, while Clinton's four points behind at 42 percent. Now, that's where Trump will be campaigning today. Yesterday, he was in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, where he was back to ripping on Obamacare. He says, if elected, he'll ask Congress to convene a special session to repeal and replace it. He's also asking Democrats who've already voted for Clinton to reconsider. He says that in some states, it's not too late to change your vote if you're experiencing, quote, buyer's remorse after all of these latest revelations about her emails. And Trump also had this message for her campaign chairman, John Podesta. Listen. ...has been caught saying, we have to dump all of those emails. Can you believe this? That's WikiLeaks. John Podesta, I tell you what, if he worked for me, I would fire him so fast. Like The Apprentice. John, you're fired. 
I think he's rehearsed that line a few times. Now, in Wisconsin, that's where Trump was just speaking, voters can actually change their minds up to three times. Who knew? Apparently, it's rarely ever done, but Abby and Heather, and again, I mean, 2016 seems intent on breaking every single right. rule that's out there. So maybe some Wisconsin voters will change their minds. They have until Thursday to do so. Yeah. Back right. to you. To all those people who called this over months ago, mm -hmm. it's not over till I it's know. over. Just like sports. <laughs> and we've certainly learned a lot in this election. Yeah. Seven states, aside from Wisconsin, seven in all, you can change your vote. Who knew? Who knew? Thanks, Kristen. That's what Kristen sure. thank you. was here to tell yeah. us this morning. Who knew? <laughs> all right, well, on the Democratic side, just call her the pivot map. FBI investigation on the trail and instead ramping up attacks on Donald Trump. Jackie Banyas is here following the Clinton campaign. Jackie, good morning. Good morning, Abby. One more week. Hillary Clinton heading to Arizona and Nevada today where she's in virtual tie with Donald Trump. Right now, a clear, real clear politics poll average shows Trump leading his Democratic challenger by one and a half points in the red state of Arizona. Stark contrast from one week ago, you may remember. And in Nevada, Trump is closing in on Clinton's once more than five point lead. He's now trailing by a single point in the swing state. But as the numbers creep closer nationwide, Clinton is coming out swinging. Yesterday in critical Florida, she deflected from her renewed FBI firestorm by pivoting towards Trump's taxes. Took everything our great country has to offer. He scooped it up with both hands and then paid nothing to support us. And then he has the nerve to call our military a disaster, to insult POWs when he hasn't paid a penny to support the people who put on the uniform of the United States of America. Donald Trump is the poster boy for everything that's wrong with our economy. She even brought former Miss Universe Alicia Machado on stage, parading the woman Trump once called Miss Piggy around, using her to blast her rival on his treatment of women. And today, Clinton is pulling out a full court press across the U.S. less than one week out from Election Day. President Obama, Tim Kaine, Bernie Sanders, Bill and Chelsea, of course, all tackling the trail for the Democratic nominee. Heather, back to you. All those swing states, they are so close. Thank you so much, Jackie. We have a brand new warning. WikiLeaks might soon release Hillary Clinton's 33,000 deleted emails. Remember those? Well, this comes as new emails reveal a $6 million foreign donation to the Clinton Foundation. Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry has details on the mad scramble to, quote, dump all the emails. An explosive new email shows Bill Clinton lined up a cool six. His foundation from Sheikh Mohammed of Ethiopia with a mere phone call. One aide writing, it would be crazy to go all the way to Ethiopia for a conference. Lindsay lies, if the call is made, it will help us get the $6 million. I think he should call. And a newly leaked email from March 2, 2015, the night the New York Times revealed Clinton used a private email account as Secretary of State shows. Campaign Chairman John Podesta wrote Cheryl Mills, not to sound like Lanny, but we are going to have to dump all those emails, so better to do so sooner than later. A reference to damage control expert Lanny Davis, known for urging the Clintons to err on the side of transparency. Except the timeline created by these WikiLeaks disclosures show a far different approach of holding back information starting with the candidate. When the Times story first crossed on March 2nd, Podesta asked campaign manager Robbie Mook if he had any idea of the depth of it. Mook replied, nope. On March 4th, Republican Trey Gowdy, chair of the Benghazi committee, subpoenaed Clinton's emails. That same day, citing executive privilege, Podesta wrote Mills, think we should hold emails to and from the president? March 7th, President Obama said he learned about Clinton's email system from news reports. Mills writes, we need to clean this up. He has emails from her. They do not say state.gov. That same day, Philippe Reines writes, there is just no good answer for the server. In Washington, Ed Henry, Fox News. You know, if you haven't done it yourself, go through the, some of those weekly emails because it's amazing. It really is. Mm -hmm. I spent all day yesterday just reading through them. Really yeah. fascinating. All right, the time is now 38 after the hour. And voter fraud alert. Brand new concerns this morning about stolen absentee ballots in one of the biggest battleground states. And President Obama hitting the trail hard for Hillary Clinton. We've seen in America that went from too many people uninsured to now 20 million people with health care who didn't have it before. Hmm, but what would a Clinton presidency actually look like for your wallet? We're taking a closer hmm. look up next.
Welcome back to Fox and Friends First, a Fox News alert for you. A massive manhunt happening right now in Iowa. That is where two police officers were gunned down in what appears to be a violent ambush style attack. One officer had been responding to a call about shots fired. This was near a high school just outside of Des Moines around 1 a.m. The other officer responding was ambushed in his patrol car near the scene. So far, no one is in custody. We are expecting to learn more from police in just a few moments, and we'll bring you those details as soon as we have them. No, just a horrible. Mm -hmm. Well, just six days until the presidential election and voter fraud is front and center. Thieves are stealing ballot forms from mailboxes and using them to vote. A couple near Orlando who didn't receive their ballots in the mail, they discovered they had already been turned in. Well, the same thing happened to three of their neighbors. Election, election officials say the fraudulent votes luckily were not counted. And there is no debate this election has been vicious on the campaign trail, but it's even gotten so heated an elementary school canceled its mock presidential election because students were fighting. The principal at the school in New York saying, quote, teachers heard some kids in the cafeteria chanting Trump, 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 or saying they don't want Muslims here. We have a diverse community here. We want all our students to feel valued. Instead, students will vote for their favorite school lunch instead. Heather. Thank you, Abby. Well, President Obama hitting the trail hard for Hillary Clinton and hyping the economy that he's overseen for the last eight years. Listen. We turned job losses into 15 million new jobs. Poverty went down faster than any time since 1968. We've seen an America that went from too many people uninsured to now 20 million people with health care who didn't have it before. But is the economic picture really as rosy as the president is painting it? And what will it mean for voters if Hillary Clinton continues his legacy for the next four years? Brian Brinberg, he's the chairman of business and finance at the King's College in New York City. And he joins us now to break it all down for us. Thank you for joining Good us. Good to be here. So we heard President Obama painting a rosy picture yeah. there. And he did, you know, what, uh, grow the economy, but not necessarily in the correct places. Well, you know, he's, he's telling part of the story, but you uh -huh. notice what he's leaving out. He's yeah. leaving out debt. He's leaving out long-term unemployed. He's leaving out people stuck in part-time jobs. He's leaving out the growth and regulation. That's part of the Obama economy story. If you're not telling that part of the story, yeah. you're not telling the whole story. And the here. people not looking for jobs anymore because they just And the growth gave and up. the number of people who have dropped out of the labor yeah. force. Yeah, so this is a it's a very mixed picture at best and he's just not telling that story in the campaign trail. But when you hear Hillary Clinton speak about her economic plan, she's got big plans. Let's take a look first of all at her wish list. This is everything that she would like to do and it sure sounds great. 350 billion dollars for tuition free college, 275 billion for infrastructure, 300 billion for paid family family leave and 60 billion for clean energy. All right, well that's all great, but how are you going to pay for it's it? It's got to come from somebody. Yeah. It's going to come out of somebody's pocket. Clinton says it's going to come out of wealthy taxpayers' pockets. She wants to tax the rich, she says, not middle-class Americans. The problem there is the rich, the wealthy have capital that they invest in businesses. They have m money that they can lend to borrowers to buy homes. And so what happens is when you tax them, you're actually eliminating that capital, drying up capital for the average American, and that hurts the average American. Mm -hmm. the the economy is a whole. It's not parts. It's not wealthy against middle class. It's everybody working together. Yeah. But she seems to want to bifurcate it. Well, let's take a look at those numbers you were just mentioning for the middle class. The estimated cost of a Hillary Clinton presidency for the average middle class citizen, a 1.8 to 2.4 percent decrease after tax income, and then a $750 cost for a worker with a salary of 36000 or so a year. Yeah. These are rough estimates because, mm -hmm. of course, the candidates never put out enough detail to really tell with any precision what's going to happen. But the point is Hillary Clinton's not going to grow the economy. She wants to tax the rich and she wants the government to spend more money. As you said, give money to college students, spend more money on health care, but it's not going to grow the economy, which means it's not going to grow investment, it's not going to grow wages, and that's what hits middle class taxpayers' yeah. pocketbooks. So in order to grow the economy, one of the main things you have to do is have new businesses. Absolutely. You need to reform taxes, you need to reform regulation. We've had hundreds of billions of dollars 
dollars of new regulation over the past eight years. Mm-hmm. That kills businesses. That makes it hard to start a new business. If you want to put people to work, if you want to grow wages, you have to grow businesses. That means you have to roll back regulation. She wants to go in the opposite direction, and that's one of the real problems with her economic plan. Yeah, and also she wants to, uh, you know, kind of redo Obamacare, keep Obamacare, and we have all of those costs yeah. that are coming out in the news. Double down on Obamacare, yeah. increase the subsidies, introduce a public option. So mm-hmm. if you like the way Obamacare is working, if you like the higher premiums, well, you're probably going to see more of that under her plan. Mm-hmm. And then also in her in her plan, what's the other key to growing the economy that we would need to do in order to pay for it? Well, in her her plan just doesn't have growth. She's talking about infrastructure spending as a way to grow the economy. But we've seen that story play out in this country in 2008. We've seen it play out in other countries. It doesn't work. Government stimulus doesn't grow the economy. Private investment does. And the problem right now with Clinton's plan, mm-hmm. she's talking about government trying to grow the economy. That's moving in. That's the direction of the last seven years. We haven't seen the results we wanted to see. We need to move in the other yeah, direction. Yeah, it's like that other phrase for tax increases. Don't yeah. want to use that phrase. No, right. But it means the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this either. morning, Brian. Good to see you, too. You bet. Always late to have you. Well, uh, I'm still coming up. We have the other Brian, Brian Kilmeade, <laughs> with what is coming up on Fox and Friends this morning. Good morning to you. Yeah, and Heather, if negotiations come out well, I'm going to be joined by Ainsley and Steve, but we're not going to know to the very last minute. Uh, let me tell you, Heather, a great show as usual, but let me tell you what's straight ahead. Six days into the election, Carl Rove is here live to map out Donald Trump's potential path to victory, one that wasn't there perhaps a week ago. Lieutenant General Michael Flynn's been do- doing most of the introducing of Donald Trump on the, pl- uh, on the stump. He's going to be here live. And Kurt Menefee of Fox Sports has a great message. Sometimes you lose in order to win. He's going to be here live as well as some other special guests. Don't miss a minute of Fox and Friends. Countdown to the most exciting election in the history of man continues. Well, now to a Fox Business Alert. Some brand new State Department documents reveal hackers tried to hit Hillary Clinton's private server nearly a dozen times. Wow. Cheryl Costani from our sister network, Fox Business, here with the latest on that. Cheryl, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Well, these new documents really show us the complexity of having a private server and the danger of that as well. Now, this email, and we're going to show it to you right now, comes from Brian Pagliano. He was an aide to Hillary Clinton. This newly discovered email written says that basically the failed law Login attempts on the 27th were for username Doug and Doug Band. The failed login attempts on the 29th were for username Huma. They're trying to figure out who was trying to log into that server. They, they, did, have hack, they did have hackers attempting this between November 27th and the 29th back in 2010, but now we're seeing the proof of that. Now, here's what's really key about this. Remember that Director Comey said that there was no evidence that her server had been compromised, but at the same time, with just those two days, that 40-hour period, with the hackers trying to get into her email server, there's no more questions about was the data compromised. A lot of questions. That's what people were concerned about early on with this whole thing. So people have been searching Google all election long, but there's one search that's been hitting an all-time high. Uh, Yeah, this is interesting. So the phrase, where do I vote early, the amount of times that people are going to Google and searching on that from September to October of this year jumped 3,200%. The top five counties where they were searching were in Texas, but take a look at the states uh, where they were actually searching as well. The top five early voting searches, Maryland, Georgia. Georgia, North Carolina, Washington, D.C., and Texas. Again, as I mentioned, the top five counties yeah. by county were in Texas. But Google Trends saying that that is a very popular topic. Yeah, we'll see if that translates to more people actually voting early. Yes. All right, so there's this new Starbucks cup. Not a, people, a lot of people not voting for it, not in favor of it. It's uh, green. Yeah, I thought it was the holiday cup when yeah. I first saw it, Cheryl. Yeah, I know. It, it's, it is confusing, to be honest with you. So this is, this is the unity cup. Okay, and so Starbucks always comes out out with new cups for the holidays, but this is coming out before the election. And the the artist that designed the cup says that basically it's to show everyone uniting together. Well, they're getting kind of slammed on social media, especially on Twitter, because they say that the critics say that this is a liberal bias that Starbucks is showing and that they're trying to somehow affect the election. Also, they're saying, where's the holiday uh, spirit in these cups? Even though these cups are coming out before the election, this is the this is when they do their holiday cups at Starbucks, and critics are saying that you're once again insulting Christmas. But that's not replacing the holiday cup. No, we still get those, right? Because I wait all year long for the holiday cup. There's there's going to be a red cup, but there's nothing 
Christian about the cup. There's nothing yeah. that says Christmas. It's very, mm -hmm. very kind of plain. Yeah. And yeah. they've been moving in this direction over the last two to three years. And and they're, they're, again, yeah. they're getting they're getting hit again. Well, we have a lot of people that have some comments about we that. We do. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. And those comments pouring in about that Starbucks cup controversy. Marianne on Facebook saying that Starbucks needs to stick to selling coffee and not pushing their political agenda down our throats. Ooh, Carla says, not fooling me. I know they're supporting crooked Hillary. Daniel says, anti-military, pro-Clinton, pro-Planned Parenthood equals no more caramel fraps for me. <laughs> Just say no to Starbucks. And Ezra makes it simple. I don't care as long as the drinks are still good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all your comments. That's a way to round it out. Yeah, they should be cheaper, though. I don't know. I agree with that. Coffee. All right, almost five minutes now to the top of the hour. And brace yourself for some pain at the pump. What could have gas prices skyrocketing? <sighs> One minute until the top of the hour. Before you leave the house, here's what's happening for you today. A manhunt right now after two police officers are gunned down in an ambush near Des Moines, Iowa. The officers killed 30 minutes apart. One of them was sitting alone in his patrol car. Gas prices are expected to rise on the East Coast after a deadly gas explosion. A state of emergency now declared in Alabama as crews repair the Colonial Pipeline. And it all comes down to tonight. The Chicago Cubs mm. forcing the Cleveland Indians into Game 7 of the World Series after a 9-3 win last night. Game time, 8 p.m. Eastern in Cleveland. It's going to be an emotional one. Mm. All right, well, six days left, and we are in the home stretch. Hillary Clinton campaigning in Arizona and Nevada today as Donald Trump crisscrosses Florida, pushing his message to voters that there's still time to change your vote. So let's keep talking about that. Would you change your early vote if you could? Weigh in now on our Facebook page mm -hmm. with the hashtag Tag, keep yeah. talking. In seven states, you can do that. Who yeah. knew? Well, Fox and Friends starts right now. Have a good day. Bye. It is Wednesday, November 2nd. I'm Ainsley O'Hart. We start with this a Fox News alert. It has happened again. Two officers ambushed overnight, shot to death. While sitting in their squad cars, this happened in Iowa. Right now, a massive manhunt is underway looking for that shooter. We are following the breaking developments. It's terrible. Meanwhile, six days until the election, Donald Trump issues a challenge to voters who have already cast their ballots. This is a good time to make an important public service announcement. You can change your vote to Donald Trump will make America great again, okay? You can if you've early voted in a couple of states. We're going to tell you what we know about that coming up. Then, if you or your friends support Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton wants to have a talk. If you know anybody who's thinking about voting for Trump, well, first of all, stage an intervention. Okay, that's your closing argument. Plus, more details about the investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails. Somebody's been hacking like 10 times. Let me just remind you wake up, please get dressed. Your mornings are better with friends. This is a Fox News alert, and uh, thanks for joining us on this very, very busy Wednesday. Heather's got a, uh, a sad story out of Urbandale, Iowa, which is uh, the western suburbs of Des Moines. That's right. Uh, this news just coming in overnight. It happened about 1 a.m. local time, breaking at this hour. There is a massive manhunt that is now intensifying for a cop killer in that state. Police in Iowa say a gunman targeted two officers in what they describe as violent ambush-style attacks. One officer had been responding to a call about shots fired near a high school just outside Side Des Moines. The other officer then responding, he was ambushed in his patrol car near the scene. So far, no one is in custody. We are expecting to learn more from police in just a few minutes, and we will bring you those breaking details as soon as we have them. Investigators are hoping that recording equipment can explain what caused this violent and deadly school bus crash. Police in Baltimore say the empty school bus, thankfully for that, zigzagged down the street like a ping pong ball. The bus first plowing into the back of a car before it tore into a city bus with people on board. Six people were killed, including the school bus driver. Police say there were no skid marks, indicating that driver may have had a medical emergency. Well, just hours after decades of disappointment and heartbreak will be washed away for either Chicago or for Cleveland. 
of Florida. That's right. The Republican nominee urging early Clinton voters to recast their ballots in the wake of this latest FBI investigation. All right, Fox News national senior national correspondent John Roberts is live <laughs> in Miami with the very latest. Hey, John. It was close. I'm just going to give up, Brian. Yeah. Just, just, just say here. We're almost John. done. I got six more days to get it right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We'll keep trying. Good morning to you, Brian, Steve, Ainsley. It always feels good to be in Florida. Somehow waking up in Miami on the shores of Biscayne Bay is just a wonderful thing. Four, uh, three numbers rather to keep in mind here: twenty-nine, four, and four million and ninety-three thousand. Twenty-nine electoral votes up for grab. This is the big prize of all of the swing states. Donald Trump leads in a new New York Times Siena poll by four points. And 4,093,000 people have already cast early ballots. Today, Donald Trump with a big rally here in downtown Miami at the amphitheater at Bayfront Park that's going to provide him a very big visual in terms of creating enthusiasm to get people out to vote here in the Sunshine State. Yesterday, a big rally in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where Donald Trump uh, urged people who have voted for Hillary Clinton in four states where they allow it to, to change their vote on Election Day. Listen to what he said. For any Democratic voter who have already cast their ballots for Hillary Clinton and who are having a bad case of buyer's remorse, Wisconsin is one of several states where you can change your early ballot if you think you've made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, those other states are Michigan, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, by the way. Uh, Donald Trump yesterday continued to highlight uh, Hillary Clinton's lingering problems with the FBI investigation. He'll do that again today, but also going deep into policy yesterday with a speech in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania on Obamacare. Of course, he's promised to repeal and replace it, but upping the ante yesterday, saying that he would make this a big priority and uh, would do that through Congress with a, a very you, interesting uh, way to do it. Listen to what he said. I will ask Congress to convene a special session so we can repeal and replace. And it will be such an honor for me, for you, and for everybody in this country because Obamacare has to be replaced. That was the first time yesterday that he's talked about this idea of convening a special session of Congress. Early voting here in Florida, we mentioned nearly about 4,100,000 people have voted. So far, Republicans lead in returns by about 15,000. Not to say that people voted along party lines, but that'll give you an indication of how the returns have been coming here. Brian, Steve, right. Ainsley. All right, John, thank you very much. And the and interesting the thing, thing, go ahead, Steve. I was going to say the interesting thing about that is usually Democrats lead in early voting. Mm -hmm. Republicans go to the polls the day of the vote. Mm -hmm. And the real story also is that no one's talking about is the black vote is really down everywhere, especially in North Carolina. It's down in Florida. Mm -hmm. It is down in some key states that could really Nothing compared Hillary to Clinton. what happened when President Obama was running. And of course. We, yeah, in fact, that's what we're comparing it to. Right. And that's would, that's what Hillary Clinton was counting. Right. You know, we like to tell you news that you're interested in, obviously. If you go to Google and you see what you guys are searching for, so many of you are searching for change early vote. Look, Look at the at spike in that at the end of October a few days ago. That was after the FBI reopened the investigation on Clinton because many people out there in certain states were voting for Hillary Clinton and they're interested now in changing their votes. We should also point out that Donald Trump did mention yesterday out on the stump, as we just heard from John Roberts, that, you know, there are certain states. And what are they, Ainsley? Where the you can states do it? where you can do it: Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, and Mississippi. You had a segment on that yesterday morning, last night. Donald Trump's talking about it. Now people are looking to see if they can change their votes. That's right. We did the segment because people were interested in it. We did. Meanwhile, down in Sanford, Florida, yesterday, Hillary Clinton was down there, and you know what? I don't think she likes Donald Trump, and she knows that there are a lot of people in Florida who are going to vote for him, even though she needs their vote, and she made this suggestion yesterday. If you know anybody who's thinking about voting for Trump, well, first of all, stage an intervention. I mean, this... And... You know, if they've ever paid a dollar in income tax, ask them whether they think it's so smart for somebody to lose other people's money, claim a loss, and then not pay income taxes.
Right, and she continues to pretend as if uh, people in big business don't do everything they can to pay as little tax as possible. I think it's an insult to most of the audience. Yeah, also, she, she's talking she about that, something that's legal. Yeah, she a, says that, and meanwhile, health care costs are skyrocketing yeah. and no one can afford it. Uh, Asia, that's my exact point, is that Donald Trump was actually getting cheers because he was talking about policy yesterday, including Obamacare, when signups began because it was very apropos to what's happening. Hillary Clinton, it, in, to a degree, I think that she's getting a little desperate. When you wheel out Alicia Machado, who can speak barely speak English in Florida to, to plead your case not to vote for the other guy instead of saying, this is what I will do as president after the fireworks show when I celebrate. This is what I'm going to do. Instead, she's like, oh, you're not going to believe how bad the other guy is. While President Obama's out there saying, oh, by the way, if you don't vote for her, you just don't like women. You're sexist. Well, listen, the race has tightened ever since the Comey surprise, and you know they're pulling out what they got. Pulling out all look, the stops. Yeah, look for them but to throw the... is that the right well, stop Machata, to close out an argument? Was she convicted? Maybe that's is she got. a criminal? She was convicted, or was she accused of crimes? She had some rough years. Yeah. Okay, let's just go with that. You're talking about the Very, drug, yeah. She was uh, friends with a drug kingpin. It is alleged. Yeah. Okay. We all have one friend that becomes a drug kingpin. Meanwhile, who exactly was Donna Brazil's friend who fed her the question that she then fed to Hillary Clinton? We know that she did it at least twice, thanks to WikiLeaks. Something about other the primary debate? Something like that. So anyway, uh, the Daily Caller tried to figure out. Out. Okay, who could possibly, which of the women uh, asked the question, and who did they tell that question to beforehand? Well, CNN has been floating this idea that maybe Donna Brazil heard the question from the woman who asked it, and they, they queried two different women. Mickey the, Ward and Leanne Walters. The day before at a charity event. And as it turns out, both women say, we never met her. We talked instead to a producer from Anderson Cooper, and we gave that person the question. Danelle Garcia is the producer at CNN that they said they talked to. Mickey Ward, like you were saying, and Leanne Walters, the mm -hmm. two women who stood up and asked um, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders debate questions in well, March. Well, uh, Jeff Zucker says he's horrified. Uh, Jake Tapper says it's uh, it's uh, terrible. You know, he's uh, he's every he, everyone's upset that he actually got this, that these questions got out, and you just wonder. Were these the only two questions, and is Donna Brazile the only one leaking things to Hillary Clinton? What other events took place? What other questions got out? Remember, Donna Brazile ended that email with more to come. Well, CNN, CNN was confident that uh, she did not receive the questions from anybody at CNN, and yet you, you put the dots together, and it doesn't look as if they got, she got the questions directly from the women. Uh, keep in mind as well, one of the things, thanks to WikiLeaks, is we see the collusion with the media this time that we have never seen before. The New York Times, you've got NBC, you've got MSNBC, you've got CNN, you've got all sorts of media outlets all in bed with the Clinton camp. How about this? One of those WikiLeaks actually talked about the outrage they felt on an SNL skit that depicted George Soros and another one of their big donors on it. I don't even remember the skit. Next thing you know, the SNL takes down all links to that skit. Really? Wait a second, so they're even rigging the comedy shows? Yeah. You know Because I have a few skits I'd like them to take down that might be retrievable. With journalists that are with the mainstream media that are colluding in all of this, they need to learn a lesson from this, that you are going to get caught, and this is a prime example. Yeah. This journalist's name is all over the internet now. So anyway, thought we'd bring you up to date on that. Meanwhile, look at this. All right, six days from now, six days, Steve, you brought up a good point. Next week at this time, we're going to know who has won this election. That's right. We're going to have coverage for you all next week. Fox and Friends, we're going to be live starting at 5 a.m. And we're going to be, someone here at Fox will be live on the air at all times as the polls are opening and the votes come in. So stay with Fox News, America's election headquarters. I don't mean to counter Steve, but I remember a Bush Gore. The I know, I thought about that when I said it. I know who the president was. I thought about that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. We're hoping that, yeah, that a we week have from right results. now, when you tune in, you'll know. Meanwhile, straight ahead on this Wednesday, Donna Brazile feeding debate questions to the Clinton camp is just the tip of the iceberg. We're breaking down the worst examples of media bias, and there are plenty coming up next. And Starbucks trying to break the uh, to bring the country back together with a special unity cup of coffee, but is doing just the opposite online. The revolt going viral. Straight ahead.
It's a rigged system, folks, and a big part of the rigging is the media. I will tell you right now. It's a big part of the rigging. Donald Trump has called it out, his entire campaign, but media bias is reaching a fever pitch because we are just six days out from the big election day. Here to break down the most outrageous violations yet, Kelly Riddell. She is the deputy opinion editor at The Washington Times. Great to see you again, Kelly. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Let's uh, start with some examples of how the mainstream media is spinning this. Hillary Clinton's emails, mm -hmm. and now they are blaming this on James Comey. It's an indictment on the FBI. <laughs> Look at this. Mainstream media had 88 negative statements about Comey compared to 31 critical statements of Hillary Clinton in regards to this latest case. And then USA Today, their headline was, Email Case Puts Heat on FBI Chief. What's your reaction? I mean, this is just typical. This is what the Hillary Clinton campaign wanted to do as soon as this news broke, was basically turn this into an indictment on James Comey and not on her and to deflect the attention. And this is what uh, the mainstream media is doing. Um, they also, the Clinton team, also dumped a bunch of oppo research on Donald Trump over the weekend and on Monday about his, presume his ties to Russia and how the FBI is looking into this. You see Harry Reid go on the Senate floor on Monday saying the FBI has exposed explosive information about uh, Trump's ties to Russia. And none of this has really panned out, but that did not stop NBC and CNBC from basically putting out very thinly reported stories about the FBI probing into um, Paul Manafort's ties with Russia. And then Slate putting out uh, what is now a debunked story saying that Donald Trump had a private email server that connected directly to a bank in the Kremlin. Hillary Clinton tweeted that out, um, that story out, and it's been largely largely discredited because it just didn't make any sense by cybersecurity analysts. It's yep. just not true. We showed some of those headlines. The one that got me, Slate said, was a Trump server communicating with Russia. <laughs> I was watching some of the mainstream media this morning while I was getting ready at home, and they were showing video of what people in Russia were doing and what they thought <laughs> about the election. And I thought, do Americans, is that really care? pertinent here? Do we care? Yeah, no, I mean, but that is, that's one of the